Okay. So hello everyone, welcome uh, to our presentation, Rage of the Kittens. Uh, and as we said earlier, we are referring kittens as the nation state uh, sponsored threat actors originated from Iran. Uh, the name of the cat or the kitten, uh, as Oad said, is uh, from the uh, major uh, symbol of uh, Iran in regards to animals, which is uh, the cat. Uh, we're going to talk about um, the beginning of the cyber arm of, uh, of Iran. Why did it start? What was the, the major impact that caused uh, this uh, massive country to become one of the most influential one, not only in the uh, physical world, but also uh, in the cyber world, which we, uh, which we know today. So just a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Ido. I'm uh, the founder and CEO of Security Joe's, previously a global research and analysis team of Kaspersky. After six years uh, with the amazing Kaspersky, I decided that uh, it is time for me to spread my wings and I opened my own company. We are at the moment uh, 11 employees uh, working mainly on incident response and uh, threat actor mitigation. Uh, and with me is Ohad, which will introduce himself. Hello, everyone. My name is Ohad Zeisenberg. Today I'm here with the head of my day job, which is the lead cyber intelligence researcher of Clear Sky Cybersecurity. Clear Sky Cybersecurity is an Israel cyber intelligence firm that mostly uh, interests in attacks in the Middle East, in Europe, in, in the United States. In my day job, I'm focusing um, on Iran as a strategic. Uh, target of investigations. Moreover, I want to emphasize that I'm the founder of the CTID. It's a world and global um, organization, non-profit, that dedicated to protect the medical sector and the life-saving uh, uh, organization worldwide. But today, I'm here um, to talk about a day job. Uh, clear. The day job is not selling lemonade? No, uh, they were <laughs> Their job is hunting the Iranian activity worldwide, and they know that, and they okay. really like it. <laughs> Me and Ohad, they go way back, basically. Uh, uh, Clear Sky, I know you're probably familiar with the name, uh, and hopefully in the future we'll be f you will be familiar with Security Joes as well. Uh, as part of our engagement, uh, we have uh, this uh, small uh, platform which uh, me and a friend uh, uh, established called Virus Bay kind of similar to virus total, only uh, smaller and more social. Uh, for those of you who like reverse engineering and uh, viral analysis are welcome to connect to Virus Bay. Uh, it's a really nice place to start. Uh, and also, I'm guessing that uh, uh, the uh, communication between Clear Sky and Security Joes also uh, um, uh, links us to the Israeli law enforcement. We work constantly with the Israeli CERT and with the Israeli Lahav uh, cyber police um, in order to not only uh, focus on the, uh, the Iranian regime and uh, their cyberspace, but also other attackers, uh, you know, which are aimed into uh, demolishing ordinary lives of uh, citizens. So um, let's continue. The, um, I guess the major impact which uh, started this, uh, uh, this uh, cyber uh, uh, space of, of Iran uh, started with uh, the attack on, on the uh, Natanz uh, uh, uranium enrichment uh, in Iran. And what happened there, well, it's a, it's a big story. And that's why I thought, well, it's a really nice place for you, uh, for me to uh, recommend on something that uh, will help you understand exactly what happened, uh, detail to detail. Uh, the person in the, uh, in the ring, which if you haven't recognized is Kim Zetter, is a very, very famous reporter and a very nice person. She wrote uh, Countdown to Zero Day, which is uh, an amazing book. I have it on my shelf next to all my, uh, my belts. Um, and um, it, uh, it highlights uh, specifically what were uh, the, uh, the origins of the attack, what, what actually made uh, uh, the, the, the attacker targeting uh, such a uranium enrichment uh, base, and also uh, talks about the, the malware itself, the, uh, the activity 
um, day to day and also the researchers who uh, investigated it uh, years after um, and found uh, uh, indicators of compromise which you know were not even uh, uh, in the news or in any place uh, other than this book also in a very famous uh, Forbes article uh, we can see that uh, 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 someone uh, was uh, uh, was quoting the fact that um, Iran uh, invested heavily in building cyber defenses and uh, cyber attack capabilities and with you know the word cyber attack capabilities involved uh, because ever since uh, this uh, event and some other uh, events which happened just right after um, the change between uh, what was the, the cyber army of Iran uh, prior to uh, after is major. If we look at the timeline, we can see that not only Stuxnet was uh, the, uh, the major impact on Iran uh, trying to um, run in this uh, armed race of having their own uh, uh, state-sponsored uh, units, uh, even though if we look uh, prior to the Stuxnet attack, we can see that the cyber operation program, which basically were fun was funded somewhere around 2005, started its operation around 2009. Uh, however, we haven't seen any uh, major attacks. Of course, we have the Twitter attack and, uh, uh, and other similar uh, takedowns of uh, uh, platforms and social platforms which we all know today uh, we consider strong even though uh, you know that the latest attack on Twitter uh, showed us that uh, you know 2020 is not very uh, far from what happened in 20 in, in uh, 2009 uh, and, and almost before Stuxnet hits or maybe uh, during the stages of the preparation uh, the Khaiba Center, which is very famous for executing uh, cyber attacks uh, later in the future, uh, in 2010 uh, just received funding and established its, uh, its place in the, uh, in the uh, Iranian uh, uh, atmosphere or Iranian uh, um, arsenal. Uh, Following the, the Stuxnet uh, were two other attacks uh, which are suspected to come from the same origin. One of them is called Duku and the other one Flame, also stronger at, uh, as Stuxnet, however, focusing on different motivation. Both were uh, uh, for collecting espionage and had uh, striking similarities to, to Stuxnet, each with its own. Uh, and following uh, the attacks on Iran, which are in red, we have uh, executions of attacks coming from Iran to the outside. A very famous one was the Shamoon operation, which targeted the uh, Aramco uh, uh, oil factory. Um, this was the, a way for, uh, for us at least to understand uh, that following uh, uh, the sanctions which came from, from the West, from, from, uh, from Obama, uh, on, on Iran, uh, pushed some sort of a, a, a preparation of attack from the Iranian side in order to, uh, in order to emphasize uh, the fact that they are very much against what the world is, uh, uh, is about or what uh, they uh, have uh, for, uh, for Iran. And uh, right after came another operation which haven't, uh, haven't went into news articles, but only five years later. It's called the Operation Ababil, which um, was mostly revolving around the denial of service attack for in majority to uh, uh, financial uh, institutions. Um, and only in 2018, uh, it was attributed to Mabna Institute, which uh, is still operating by the way. And if you can, if you want, if you go ahead and expand your, uh, your knowledge about Mabda Institute, you can see that uh, it has links to uh, state-sponsored state uh, attackers, which, you know, at the same time of the Operation Ababil, started to establish their place in the, uh, in the cyber space. Uh, so following these uh, state-sponsored attackers, we have APT 33, 34. If you take the 
two of them and you somehow uh, uh, you know, link the indicators, you can also find, an, find another APT, which is called APT39 or Chaffer. Uh, we'll talk about it uh, just later in the slides. And another connection to some uh, uh, APT called, uh, or called by Mandi and another, uh, uh, and other uh, companies in APT35, uh, which also linked to uh, some kittens, which we will discuss later. Uh, the final uh, attack that I want to, to emphasize or talk about, because in 2016 and 17 and, and following these years, we've seen a lot of the a lot of a lot of attacks, uh, more of the same. We can see Shamun 2.0 in 2017, but I, but the Las Vegas Sands uh, destructive attack was very special or unique uh, because uh, the founder or the owner of Las Vegas Sands, uh, the Sheldon Edelson, uh, the billionaire. Uh, just went uh, live and published his uh, agenda regarding uh, the Iranian regime, something that wasn't acceptable uh, during that time in the beginning of 2014. And this destructive attack just uh, gave us a, like, a quick, uh, like a quick introduction into how um, the, the execution of, of operations is happening. First, it happens very fast. And second of all, it's very propaganda uh, oriented. What? Yes, so uh, Ido uh, talked about Mob9, so we just wanted to um, share this uh, in this event of uh, Mob9. So this is really unique on the matter of the Iranian threat actors. We saw uh, many reports like that, many indicators like that about uh, Lazarus, for example, about the North Korean threat actors, but to see that the Justice Department of the United States and the FBI uh, published wanted of some Iranian threat actors, highly unique. And it assembled the connection, the strong connection between the Iranian actors to the IRGC, to the CEPA. And it's really, really interesting to see that the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, the CEPA, the Rani and Relabi Islami, which is the long arm of the Iranian regime, can, can deploy cyber attack as well as terror attacks around the world. It's really, really in, in, interesting, and I really recommend to read this uh, in this event. But the IRGC is not the only body that works in, uh, in Iran. Uh, although the, the IRGC, the Islamic Revolu Revolutionary Guard Corps, are uh, completely independent from both the military and uh, and the government. Uh, with them are two, uh, I say, uh, highly or very famous uh, uh, bodies. One of them is the Ministry of Defense and the other one is the Ministry of Intelligence. Uh, in this talk, we're not connecting any of the state-sponsored uh, attackers to any of these organizations. And the reason is because there is no, um, one point or point A that points to point B. There is no one direction to actually associate an APT actor with a body like IRGC. You can associate the different groups, uh, either these uh, nine individuals which Ohad talks, talked about, or uh, different units, but not an entire sector of, uh, of APT attackers. However, we do want to emphasize that these three bodies are the main uh, executioners for, um, for the attacks that we are seeing coming from, it, from Iran. It's need to be understanding that there are overlaps between these organizations. It means that the Razarat the Ministry of Intelligence, can do the same thing and the same target that the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps want to attack. And it's really interesting to see these overlaps in Iran. So we want to start with the first actor, uh, APT33. Uh, we took the logos from uh, Mandi and FireEye, uh, which uh, nicely show how, uh, uh, I don't know, how APT actors uh, can go into one, an icon or something that uh, symbolizes the threat actor. Uh, and in addition, we created some sort of, uh, I'd say, ID uh, for, for each of the threat actor. Uh, so basically, APT33 is also known as Elfin, uh, but also have uh, different other names. Uh, 
It is uh, known since uh, 2013, as we showed in the timeline and linked uh, very much to Shamoon. Uh, the target sectors, which you know that the, um, the group is uh, focusing on is mil military aviation and petrochemical, just like we saw on the attack on uh, the Aramco, uh, and are notorious for, uh, for targeting uh, industrial control systems. The focus of this uh, of that group is mainly espionage, uh, and are using a very wide arsenal of, uh, of tools like the backdoor of Dropshot and Netwire, and also are using web shells like uh, Alpha Shell, something that is very um, very unique for you know APTs uh, from uh, from Iran using uh, .NET uh, or ASPX uh, uh, shell for uh, application servers. What is interesting about this uh, threat actor is that it became very advanced uh, during the time, not for the code of the malware, but the methods. So the attack vector, which you know we, we see lately, is the job offering uh, spear phishing emails. Uh, however, different from Lazarus, for example, which is a very advanced threat actor from North Korea, we can see that the job offering uh, is something that is highly successful in terms of spear phishing. Uh, and going after military or uh, diplomatic or media with, with job offering, which are you know, maybe over LinkedIn or other social networks, uh, is becoming more and more, uh, more and more uh, interesting for the attackers or uh, they see more success uh, from there. We saw Lazarus, for example, in the attack on the Chilean bank back in 2018, where they also used the same, uh, the same method. The second uh, threat actor which we want to focus about is APT34, uh, also known as oil rig, uh, or from other, uh, from other companies such as CrowdStrike, as Helix Kitten, um, and is, uh, it was in the past linked to IRGC, uh, the uh, revolutionary, uh, group that we talked about just earlier. Um, it is known since 2014. However, it is the the time the timeline between 2013 and 2014 is very uh, is very close. So you'd see uh, that the threat actors from Iran basically established uh, the the uh, attack uh, the attacks uh, or crafted the the arsenal. Um, at the same, almost at the same time. The, the threat actors are um, from that, uh, uh, from APT34, are focusing on sectors like the financial, the government, telecom, and energy. Uh, and, and of course, there are more, uh, which we saw, and they are focusing uh, mainly on reconnaissance for the Iranian regime, collecting information for, uh, to be used later in, uh, in attacks, could also be terror attacks. Um, and this group is uh, very much into open source tools like the DNS espionage and the exfiltrator uh, and are using spear phishing with uh, a little spice of Excel spreadsheets or uh, Word uh, Office uh, documents uh, and within them RTF type, <coughs> RTF type uh, uh, or DDE type uh, one days exploits uh, which could be used in order to um, uh, to call the command and control server. The interesting uh, thing that we saw in the news lately is the fact that they move from exfiltrating data over DNS in clear text to, uh, to exfiltrating over HTTPS, something that is called DNS over HTTPS and is unique for that group. APT35, which we believe that is somehow linked to Rocket Kitten uh, or Charming Kitten, um, is uh, an APT that is sometimes called newscaster or news beef, uh, was after diplomatic and media uh, individuals in the past, uh, and is focused on strategic intelligence. So uh, a slight difference than uh, reconnaissance or espionage, uh, a strategic, strategic intelligence we might go in, uh, into the world of the media where uh, you know, the attack want to uh, influence the, uh, uh, the, ideo the ideology of uh, specific sectors um, and the arsenal is focusing on, uh, on tools 
such as the Goli, which was uh, uh, in the in the past uh, was covered by Clear Sky as well in, in one of the articles and the MPK backdoor. But also on the other side, you can see that they are using uh, exploits with the Metasploit uh, framework. And for those of you who don't know, the next tool it's Havage, an SQL injection tool which was originated uh, in Iran, uh, at least from, from what I know. Um, so all of these are being used uh, in, in attacks from APT35, which are utilizing social engineering uh, as a way to impersonate uh, a familiar entity from either the diplomatic media defense, defense sectors in order to uh, infiltrate into uh, victims' machines. Last but not least will be the APT39, uh, which we think is an abbreviation of APT34 and 33, but there is no, uh, there is no solid uh, links which we can uh, associate to that uh, suspicion. Uh, they also know as Chaffer, uh, by their name and are known since 2014, uh, basically focusing mainly on transportation, government, telecom, and media. Uh, they are also uh, focusing on reconnaissance and have different tools uh, such as the PowerBat, which can be seen in spear phishing attacks and the ASPX uh, spy, which again uh, links uh, Iranian uh, threat actors to web shells on application servers. So um, in, in um, the, a country like Iran, um, there are two uh, sides to the coin of how they attack uh, uh, targets. One of them is through the threat actors, which Ohad will, uh, will focus and, and uh, talk about. And the other one is the outsource. Uh, there is a, the infrastructure in, in Iran in regards to how to execute uh, uh, operations. Um, sometimes focuses on, uh, on outsource, on companies, security companies sometimes, or R&D companies, uh, which executes uh, the, the operations uh, solely in, um, in, in an idea or in, a, um, in an act of, uh, um, of uh, getting fond of the uh, Iranian regime. I'm not sure regarding the sponsorship of those operations, uh, but I'm going to talk about one of these uh, one of these uh, uh, campaigns which we uh, captured last year, um, and of course later on we'll talk about the nation state uh, actors. So, a vice leaker operation was covered by Kaspersky, uh, my recent employer, um, and it was uh, mainly revolving around an attack that uh, backdoored Android applications. Inside these applications was a delimiter, which we will discuss, uh, and another application uh, which was modified by the attackers in order to communicate between them. Um, both were linked to the same CNC server, which in the domain who is revealed uh, the, a person uh, or an individual which was behind the attack with another group of people, uh, and also uh, uh, revealed the GitHub account, which uh, was uh, forking the code of uh, the modified uh, conversations app, um, which sealed the, uh, the investigation. So it all started with an app uh, which had uh, striking modules uh, that were not uh, part of the uh, original app. Uh, these modules uh, came with uh, uh, some interesting delimiter. Um, on a number of, uh, of uh, Android applications. And this delimiter also appeared on another application, which was not associated with the same attacks, uh, and then raised our interest. Our interest. Um, on the right-hand side, um, the delimiter in the code basically shows an app, uh, which is an open source one. This app is called the Conversations. It's a Jabber or XMPP type uh, application which was uh, crafted by the attackers so they can uh, link it to their uh, command and control server and uh, add more features for them to communicate over. However, uh, if you look inside these uh, applications, you can see that they are connected to this com uh, command and control uh, without any obfuscation. 
this is also something that shows us that there was not a lot of time invested in this attack and it was an oppor opportunistic one, probably pointing on the fact that it was an outsource from uh, IRGC or different bodies. Uh, and somehow this project came into the doorstep of our attacker and he decided to take ownership on it. We also see that um, the uh, conversation app uh, was modified, uh, uh, or the, the attackers modified the icon for it to not uh, appear on uh, appear on the mobile, uh, something that uh, raised more questions regarding how they are using this uh, this application. But if you look closely in the who is, and we will make it very short, uh, you can see that the email is being revealed. And once the email was revealed, it was easy for us to associate it uh, with a GitHub uh, uh, account, uh, which forked the conversations up, the same one which we saw uh, earlier in the research. And in 2019, uh, we attributed the, the attack to its individuals and took down the attack. So, Rohad? Thank you, Edo. And as Edo mentioned, um, we have four main APTs in Iran that are state-sponsored, but we have more state-sponsored group in Iran, which we call the Kittens. As you know, APT is a terminology by fire and it's a great terminology. And we use kind of other different. And we're going to go over three threat actors, three kittens that we can consider as three different layers of attacking. Three of them indicate of uh, attacks against personnel, against network via social engineering and using exploits to hack the system. Let's go for the first group, Charming Kitten. Charming Kitten is one of my favorite threat actor. I really enjoy to investigate them because they are highly active and they use so many psychological methods in order to attack their victims. They affiliated with the IRGC, and if we look on the victim maps, it's unbelievable. They are targeting Iranian academic researchers that focus in Iran in the research, Iranian descendants, U.S. Pre presidential campaign. If we, we are in uh, heading to the U.S. election, and it's really interesting to see what Trump and Kitten is going to do with that. Current and former U.S. government officials, mainly from the Secretary of State journalists that cover global politics, and lately, since March 2020, they are also targeted COVID-19 related organization, and I'm going to talk about it in a few minutes. Those, their method is spear phishing. They use mostly, on, they rely mostly on social engineering method, which means that they are targeting the psychological fails of human. And some fun fact of them, they impersonated clear sky multiple times, the company I work for. Let's see some examples for these TTPs, these social engineering vectors. The first one I want to present is an SMS that one of the uh, victims got on the 21st of uh, September 2019. Uh, Alert someone on unrecognized device attempt to sign in to your account if you want to change it, if you want to check it, please press on the link. This is classic phishing. This is kind of complex to say that it's spear phishing, but they target the same person. All of the uh, spear phishing vectors that I'm going to present now is, is, was sent on the 21st of September, 2019. And it's unbelievable. They use so many methods at the same day against the same victim. Another method and more common is on Gmail. They sent allegedly link to Google Drive, as you can see from the line below, but it's sent from a Google site. This is not even a real Google site email. As you can see, the domain of a uh, Google site is google.com and the domain of the phishing, the malicious email was sent by gmail.com. In its small details, the charming kitten leverages because they believe that their victims wouldn't recognize it. In some cases, we investigate this year, they attack really old people that don't know a lot of technology and they leverage it to attack them. And I think it's really bad to, to do it. Another uh, option of a uh, social engineering vector 
is another mail that sent by allegedly Sara Trenti that claim that she received so many unwanted advertising email from your, your email address. So we have one, some pressure that they put to say, hey, your Gmail is compromised, please press on the button to check it out. The second is I have an article to share with you. If you want to check it, please press on the button. In some cases, they impersonate other researchers in trying to attack that. In some other cases, they uh, impersonate um, journalists. In some cases, just unknown people, as you know, as you saw in Sandra Trinity. This is really amazing email. Another one that's sent on the 21st of September. This is a recovery options change. Someone that claimed that a telephone number was added to the uh, Yahoo account. But if you look on the IP, on the location that allegedly the uh, phone was added, is from North Korea. It means that Charming Kitten has no problem to connect from allegedly North Korea and to impersonate it. So they are really brave in some cases. When the victim will open the file, the link, it's almost the same. You're going to a Google site, but you can see in the header of the, um, of, of the Gmail, of the Google Home, this is, na the name is Drive, but it's a Google site. When you press on the link, this is the spear phishing website, okay? As you can see now, this is no email.gmail.com. I changed it. It was the victim's email. It will open it and he will see that his name was in it. It's another method to affect the victim to open it. If you look on the subdomain mobiles, in some cases, these indicate two-factor authentication website. They not only want to steal the credentials for your email, they want also to overcome two-factor authentication. If, they, if you have two-factor authentication, first, they will steal your password, and second, they will try to convince you to get into another mail of them, another link, another, uh, link of them, and to enter two-factor authentication numbers so they can enter to your domain, to your Gmail. We published multiple uh, reports about Charming Kitten from 2017 until now. Only two weeks ago, we published the third report. We call it The Kittens Are Back in Town. I want to share some of the insights from and some of the findings from this report. First, this email. They impersonated some reporter from Deutsche Welle. Deutsche Welle is a magazine in Germany that has multiple Iranian descendants reporter. And it's really important fact, please remember that. They sent Dear Doctor and the name of the doctor from Haifa University in Israel, may I have a minute of your time. And in this campaign, we discovered that they, target, they targeted doctors and researchers in Haifa University in and other universities in Israel and around the world, mostly in Europe. And they target also US embassy personnel from all around the world, mostly from places that has connection to Iran. This email, unlike the other emails, is very, very short. Let's look at another email from allegedly Marcy Oster from Jewish Journal. This is unbelievable because we exposed the impersonation to Jewish Journal in 2017. In the last three years, Charm and Kittel keep impersonating Jewish Journal and Deutsche Welle. Three years ago, they put a water wall in the Jewish Journal website. Now they did the same with Deutsche Welle. They also used a fake LinkedIn account to gain the trust of the victim. It means now that we have SMS, we have email, and we have LinkedIn. And it's really important to see how social engineering trying to gain the trust of the victim. A month ago, we published Dream Job Campaign by North Korea, and they, used, they relied mostly on LinkedIn, because in LinkedIn, you can get a message that goes directly to your email by some of the reporters. And it's really hard to check whether this person is a real person or imposter. Let's return to Jewish Journal because in Jewish Journal, they also had chat on WhatsApp. 
chat in WhatsApp, it's highly risky for any threat actor because you have a number, you have a photo, but you can also execute a phone call. And if you remember, I told you that in Deutsche Welle, there are many people that originally from Iran, so they have accent, then they overcome on accent and suspicious, um, suspicious ways in the phone call. You know me, I'm a reporter, I born in Iran, I have an accent. Now, trust me when I'm speaking with you. Let's see some examples of this conversation because it was 10 days of conversation on WhatsApp. On the first day, they tried to they attempt to do a voice call between the uh, victim and the attacker, allegedly a reporter from Deutsche Welle. On the third day, the victim answered. And then on the fourth day, the attacker sent the following message. This is a long message on WhatsApp, but I want to emphasize two main issues. First, we host about 114 participants, a lot of participants, but you, you the victim, of course, is invited to, to be a special speaker in the webinar. And the webinar is about Iran and Israel. So it's your expertise and also about Iran and China agreement. This is not the first time they use Iran and China. They use it before and they keep returning and reusing the same method, but changing the TTPs a little bit. That's so important to track closely any social engineering group targeting the sector that you work for or the sector that you research for. Um, because they're changing the methods, the psychological methods all the time. Let's see the same message that was sent on the ninth day. We asked again 114 participants, but since you are the main speaker, the victim didn't answer, didn't willing to open the malicious link, so they change a little bit the terminology. Now it's not a special speaker, it's the main speaker, all is on you. You are the main speaker of this webinar. You have to participate. This is a, a layer. This is a way to convince the victim to open the malicious link. What is hosted in the malicious link? This is a water wall in Deutsche Welle original website in subdomain Academia Deutsche Welle DW.de. But it, it wasn't the first time I saw this phishing kit used by Charming Kitten. They did the same thing and the same fishing kit when they impersonate Clear Sky Cybersecurity, the company I work for. In 2018, in July 2019, we identified a malicious website that impersonate us. Our website is clearskysec.com. The malicious website was clearskysecurity.net with a fishing kit. If you try to open the Google, for example, you'll get the original Google login site. But if you will press the Outlook, you get the fishing kit. And this is something that I really enjoy to um, show in my talks. This is the source code of the malicious website. And as you can see, on the default time zone, they left Asia, Tehran. And in the location that they do the redirection to, they put clearskysecurity.com, not a website, not the original one, and not the impersonate one. As we mentioned before, Charming Kitten tried to attack companies and coronavirus COVID-19 related organization. When we published the attack against Gilead company, and we published the IOCs on our Twitter account, and anyone can check that, that's the way we believe that it's most transparent to do the transparent way to do, to share the IOCs so anyone can verify the information. They respond for the first time and the Iranian mission to the United Nations denied it and said the Iranian government does not engage in cyber warfare. This whole presentation is about the cyber warfare in Iran and a lot of country, uh, countries around the world do it, but it's hard to say that the Iranian government does not engage in cyber warfare. This is not info. This is really offensive act by Iran, as Ido mentioned Shamun, and we're going to see some more of that. So if I try to summarize Charming Kitten, this is a threat actor 
that using psychological ways, social engineering ways to attack personnel, it means that the responsibility to get protected from this attack is on the personnel that they target. And it's really, and it's really important to, be, to understand who targets you. Anyone can be a target. It's just a question of who is targeting you. Another group is muddy water, and we talked about kittens. They also have the names static kittens. Let's see some examples for uh, muddy water or static kittens. They are also affiliated with uh, IRGC, and they connect the victim energy is government entities and imported personnel to the Iranian regime or the IRGC, and also companies that I can't elaborate right now. The TTPs, though, spear phishing, decoy documents, and DNS tunneling, or a rat named power stats on the on static kitten. They also impersonated Iraq and Turkey, but Lerska as well. Let's see some examples. This is the first email the victim got from allegedly Iran Center. This is a center of studies, of Iranian studies in Ankara. They made the connection, the first connection, without any link, just a conversation between the attacker, the alleged uh, reporter, and the victim. Then they asked the victim to meet them in person. The victim said, I can't meet you in person because they asked to meet in a country that the victim can't go to. So they sent him the following email. The sentence you for the information time. We will come later to meet you in person after we have decided about traveling to Israel. Of course they can't because they are from the IRGC, but they sent the victim a file. When you open the link, go to OneDrive, another way to gain the trust, see the zip. And on the zip, that was the malicious document, the decoy document of the victim. And as you can see, it's required to enter security code. The security code was sent by email. This is another option for that. And as you can see, there is sentence, two sentences to be honest, in Farsi. Farajat Ravayate file code amniati zira. It's mean that they attack in Iran too. They attack outside Iran and in Iran too. I want to use the secure work, workflow, and they did amazing job. We have two types of malicious documents. The first one, the right one, the green one, is opening a macro that open a PowerShell via a WS script, then connect to hacked C2 server, download another PowerShell, and then power stats, the rat that we talked about. It. Another option is followed rat followed rat using DNS tunneling. And if we look at it, the right one is power stats. The left one is forward. It's really interesting to see the centered actor uses two ways of infection. When they use DNS tunneling, they impersonate in the malicious website, the malicious domain, to some vendors like Trend Micro, Kaspersky, and ClearSky as well. Later on this year, we identified another malicious vector of muddy water. They sent legitimate link in a mail, as you can see here. This is a, an example for the mail. Then, totally clean Excel file. As you can see, there is a symbol of the Turkish government as they used before. You can see double enable editing on the uh, right uh, photo. It means, uh, that they made a mistake, but they used the same logo to attack. In the, uh, clean, uh, in the clean Excel file, when you press on the link, you'll get another zip file. And in the zip file, there is the malicious file. Let's go back. Do you see the designing of the green file? This is really bad, right? So Muddy Water does a lot of effort to get better. Look on that, this is beautiful. The color is so looking good. Comparing to the world with two enable editing, now we have something that looks very, very authentic. But it's not the only TTP we uncovered this year. We also saw PDF file. This is not a PDF, of course, about the coronavirus, 
but it's not an original PDF. This is an exe file that deploy malware into your system. So who is responsible to get protected from sharing and from muddy water? Both personnel that was affected by social engineering because they targeted some person to open the malicious file. They want the actor, the target, to press enable editing or enable content or to open the malicious PDF. But not only on the, uh, on the person, they need also some lack of, of protection methods in the organization they want to attack. The last threat actor that I want to talk about is Fox Kitten. We uncovered Fox Kitten on February this year, and it's one of the most sophisticated threat actor I saw from Iran. To understand the story of Fox Kitten, we need to start in 2017, when we identified some attack by oil ring, APT-34, as Ido mentioned before, targeting IT sector, communication sector, and academic sector in Israel and worldwide. This is a malicious mail that is sent to the victim. As you can see by the dana.na, this is a global uh, secure VPN. They sent a link to the VPN with username and password. The VPN is Juniper by Pool Secure VPN. Remember that? When the victim will open the link with the email and the password that they got him, it will find a malware, it will find a link to a malware in the system. We uncovered that in 2017 and we thought, that's it, we uncovered all the operation. We didn't. In 2018, we identified this full operation by Fox Kitten. Fox Kitten is one of the most widespread I ran an espionage and offensive campaign we ever saw, operated more than three years against dozens of companies and organizations in Israel and around the world. You can find the full report in our website and to see in how many countries they attacked. They attacked utilities companies in the US as the electric company of the US. They attacked IT companies, telecommunication, oil and gas, aviation, government, and more and more and more. To breach the organization, they used, they used, wait, to breach the organization, they use exploits, one day exploits. They didn't develop the uh, vulnerability, but they used, like after a few days, since the moment that the vulnerability was published, they leveraged it. The first one is on Pulse Secure VPN. It means that they used the same techniques and methods. After they breached the organization, they started to gain persistency and to enable them the way to connect the system. This is an example for what we call PowSSH Net. This is a tool that developed by FoxKitten in order to gain the possibility to connect, to do an RTP connection over an SSH talent from the internal network of the victim to the internet skipping the VPNs and RDP system. They gain persistency also with a port scanner that, in, that can do a brute force. And you can see the protocols that they are searching for, RDP, SSH, and MySQL. Another method that they did not only rely of privilege escalation tools like the PowerSSH net or the STSR port scanner, they also did really interesting methods such as replacement the sticky keys file with shell, with admin privileges. They connected via the PowerSSH tool, the PowerSSH tool over RDP, RDP over SSH to the system. And then they pressed five times on shift to open the shell code, not the sticky keys. Really, really interesting method. Another method that they did is to try to gain more password in the system to create local user and so on and so on and so on. I really recommend to read all this operation because it presents what does it mean from Iran to deploy such a sophisticated method, such a sophisticated operation that can be in so many uh, organizations worldwide without getting uncovered. We published this operation 
on February 2020. And we thought, okay, this is the end of the operation. We exposed all the tools that they used, but this is not the end. A few weeks ago, the FBI warns, the FBI warns that Fox Kitten, the same threat actor, used the F5 exploit. The F5 exploit was published only around two months ago. They know how to identify the one-day exploits and to leverage them in the system, in the victims that they want so fast. And it's really important to understand it. So if I try to conclude the state-sponsored group, they executive, they execute destructive espionage campaigns based on propaganda, PR, social engineering, and of course, these groups are fond of one-day vulnerabilities and really quick to exploit them in the wild. You need to monitor your system in order to get protected from fox kitten. Monitor the system all the time. Search for the tools. Search for, for example, juicy potato and rotten potato in your system. This is totally open source tool that they use, but also to patch the one day's vulnerabilities as fast as you can. We know that they use Citrix. A few days after we published the report, we identified that they use Citrix vulnerabilities. Since at least 2013, Iran have invested in space-sponsored attack threat actors and, of course, the outsourcing that Ido mentioned, and not afraid of showing the world who their targets are, as they did with Shamon, as they did with Duskman and ZeroClear that was exposed uh, on the end of uh, 2019. They do destructive attack, they do espionage, both on personnel and both on organizations. And the regime divided to threat after and outsourcing. This is not the only sphere in Iran that they use. They use it all the time, also with defense matter, also with nuclear matters. But it's really important to see how they use people in Iran to attack and threat actors from the Ministry of Intelligence, the IRGC, and the Ministry of Defense. And this is it. This is the rage of the kittens. We started to talk about what brought Iran to the cyber domain, what was the response of Iran with Shamun, the response for Stuxnet and all the other operations that he mentioned. We, ex we provide an overview of the APTs of Iran, some kind of uh, the identity of them. We talked about outsourcing, and he mentioned uh, Vice Licker, the great report of them. Weisslicker was the first report that Ido and I talked, and so this is really nice to talk about it together here. Then we examined Charming Kitten, the target personnel with social engineering methods, Muddy Water, Static Kitten, the target personnel, but in order to attack networks, and Fox Kitten that want to do a widespread offensive espionage campaign. 